Hi all. Today we will explore how signals interact with the angular change detection. Before we get into signals, let us explore a traditional angular application which is built in angular 16 and let's see how the change detection works in this application. So this is the application. This application has two parts. One is the left container and the other is the right container. Within this we have one left component and another component. We have two components in the right container. We explore the different ways in which chain detection can be triggered. So here we have a input box where we can enter some value and on each key press chain detection will be triggered. Similarly we have a button. Both these are basically DOM events and each DOM event will trigger a chain detection cycle. The application also contains a set timeout which is an asynchronous operation and similarly we are also subscribing to a data source which is within a service. These can also be asynchronous. In this traditional application we have not provided any specific chain detection strategy so by default the default strategy will be implemented. So let's see what happens. So let's refresh the application. So immediately you can see the chain detection running. So for logging the chain detection I have added the ng do check life cycle in each of these components. So the structure will be we have the app component which is the main component. Within that we have the left and right containers and within the left container we have two components and similarly in the right container we have two components. So when the initial rendering happens you can see that the main is rendered then the left container right container then the components within the left container and the components within the right container. So this is the flow in which the chain detection cycle happens in a normal angular application. First we have written a set timeout which gets executed after two seconds. So let's refresh once more. Now you can see that immediately after two seconds the chain detection ran and all these components are actually checked for any changes. In order to see which all components have actually changed, what I have done is within the ng do check, I am changing the background color of the component. Here if you see, after two seconds the color for all the components have changed, which means that when the timeout gets executed, the chain detection runs for all the components. So similarly, when I do a key press within this particular left component, you can see that the color is changing for the entire application which means that the chain detection will be triggered for all the components within our application. So in case we have a huge application this can cause performance issues. So in order to optimize this process what we can do is we have something called a on push strategy. So I have already taken a video on this. If you have not seen it please check it out. So in order to enable this what we can do is we just need to give the chain detection which is a option within the component and give it as on push. So when we turn on the on push chain detection, when we refresh the application, you can see that when the set timeout executes actually no change happens within the application. That is actually I am changing the name here as inside timer which should actually be displayed here within the HTML. But you can see that after two seconds the change has not happened actually. So in order to detect that particular change what we need to do is we need to explicitly call the CDR dot detect changes that is the chain detector of dot detect changes or mark for check. So the difference between the detect changes and mark for check is that when we call detect changes it will run the chain detection for the current component and all the children immediately whereas when we call mark for check what it does is it marks the current component and all its parent components as dirty so that when the next chain detection cycle happens all these components will be checked for any change. Initially let's try out with the detect changes. So since the set timeout as well as the data subscribe both these are asynchronous we need to call the detect changes. So here once we apply that we refresh it 
you can see that now the insert timer text is coming and the chain detection process is working so let's clear one more time and see the log so now you can see that only these three that is the main container the left container and the right container are checked for chain detection and the right container components which are here these are not checked for any changes similarly the left component here on the top that is also not detected so now let's type in any character so look carefully at the colors when i type here you can see that the right side that is these containers and the components they never change the color this is because when we type something here the chain detection does not check for the changes within the right so this actually improves our performance similarly when we press the left button that is here you can see that the right one as well as this that's a component which contains the text input that also won't change the color so now you can see that this particular component does not change the color in these ways we can improve the performance of the application similarly we can make use of the mark for check so once we do that what happens is that you can see that the chain detection runs but as i mentioned earlier this will trigger the chain detection from the for all the parents so here you can see that the main left right as well as both the left components are getting dirty checked but the right component still won't be checked now similarly when we press the button you can see that the chain detection pattern is similar this is the chain detection process how it works in a normal angular application so now let's see how when we make use of signals within this application it gets impacted so now let's make changes to our application to integrate signal so that we can achieve the same functionality so first we can go to the service so here in the service you can see that we are making use of a shared data source that's a subject and we have a method to emit the new value and at the same time we will be subscribing to the subject to receive the new values that is happening within the left second component so why we do this is basically when i am typing a new value here you can see that the second left component immediately displays that value based on that data service so let's see how we can implement the same using signal so first to what we can do is within the data service we can remove this data source and make use of a signal so here i am going to make use of a signal with the initial value as empty so once we import that we can remove all the things related to our subject so in effect only the signal needs to be here so this particular signal we can consume within both our left component 1 and left component 2 so here let's first go to the left first so here we are injecting the data service and the name property we are binding to the ng model of this particular text input so we cannot directly bind signals to a ng model so first we can attach the data service dot name that's a signal and if we try to give that directly here there will be an error so what we need to do is we need to split this up that's ng model there we can provide the signal and ng model change we need to set the new value of the signal so we can remove the emit value so name dot set you can provide the dollar event which will have the new value of the text input so here we can remove this emit value which is no longer needed so you can see that the code becomes much simpler now 
in the consuming part that is the second component here one main advantage of using signal is that we can remove the change detector references because we don't need to manually run the change detection it will be automatically covered in change detection even though we have enabled the on push so first what we need to do is we need to consume the signal from the data service this dot data service dot name once we assign this here within the set timeout we can directly set the value and similarly we don't need to subscribe since we are actually directly binding this name so here also we can provide the set which will update the new value within the signal and in the html we can just directly bind it so this should be fine so now let's see what happens so here you can see that when we type any value immediately the value will be reflected within our second component as well so now let's see what's the impact of signals on the chain detection so let's refresh the application and clear it now you can see that when the set timeout runs actually two times the chain detection is getting executed that is because we are sharing the same signal in both the templates that is the component 1 and component 2 the chain detection is getting triggered twice and you can see that the chain detection which gets executed it is similar to the mark for check that is it will check for all the parents of the component and the component as well during a single chain detection you can see that even though the signals can be used for achieving good performance as of angular 16 the local chain detection process has not been implemented so it will run the whole chain detection for the application which is similar to our chain detector reference dot mark for check all the other things remain similar when we click on the left button you can see that the right part is not getting affected as well as the left first component is not getting affected but the chain detection will be run from the parent that is the topmost root component till this particular component in order to get the full advantage of using signals to achieve fine-grained chain detection that is not currently available within Angular 16.